this chapter's a long one. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm not even gonna try and like hide that I'm not super gassed about this chapter this time because just oh oh my god, oh my god, unreal. We we had genuinely so many reveals this chapter that felt like epic chapter ending moments. It was just kind of crazy and. I'm I'm very happy. I'm very I'm very happy with this chapter, and I just wanted to air my thoughts out at the start because, oh my god, <laughs> this chapter is freaking amazing. And obviously, if you haven't read it yet, read it and come back to watch the video after. So, just wanted to air my thoughts out real quick at the start because this chapter is unreal. So now I'm just gonna. Get into my usual chapter breakdown shtick, tell you what I liked about it, which is a lot, and what I thought was interesting, which was a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just get into that right now. But if you want to stay tuned for more One Piece content, some more content in general, make sure to do the YouTube spiel and like, comment, subscribe, because it would mean a ton and any growth is super, super appreciated. And with that, let's get into the chapter. So the chapter is called Two Peas in a Pod, and when I originally was reading this, I assumed it would be Zoro and Sanji, and I thought that's kind of a weird title. Probably a mistranslation, but whatever, we'll continue. And we got Vivi on the cover page, we love to see it because, I don't know, seeing Vivi kind of portrayed in this princess-like way, when obviously she is the princess of Alabasta, I think it's pretty cool. And we get a funny little Karoo angry panel in the bottom corner. Now, let's get into the actual chapter. It starts, we go immediately into Zoro Sanji, which is why, you know, I assumed that the title would have been about them, but we'll get to that later. So, we see that it's right after the end of the last chapter where they knocked King and Queen down, and we get to see, we see Marco, who obviously just saved Zoro from being, not killed, obviously, but injured further by a King, and he's thinking about Whitebeard. And what he says, I thought only Mary Joie was above the red line. I'm talking about the distant past. Back then, God's land was up there. When did you start believing in such crap, Pops? And it's just, that's very fascinating because of things we'll get into later. But what I'm assuming, because of the last chapter about King, is that King's race was definitely on the red line. The world nobles took them out, killed them. Boom. That's exactly what I'm expecting. And the fact that Marco is thinking about this while staring at King basically confirms it, in my opinion. And I just want to highlight that specifically because we get to see Whitebeard, which is always a positive for basically any chapter ever. So we cut back to Zoro and Sanji and King and Queen. They're just back up immediately saying stuff along the lines of, the reason they are called the Calamities and the All-Stars is because their unstoppable toughness being these massive, basically brick walls that you really have to be something special to take down. And we get a really interesting line from Sanji here, so I just wanted to highlight it. Sanji is in pain after dodging Queen's laser barrage, and he says, nothing. It's just since my second time using the raid suit, I've been feeling kind of off. And this is very important for something later, so I'm just going to highlight that now, obviously. So, we have that set in stone. Zoro and Sanji are then attacked by King and Queen, respectively, with Zoro getting attacked by King, Sanji getting attacked by Queen, obviously showing the matchups we're going to get later on in the future. And we actually see Queen use Armored Hockey, which is kind of weird, actually, because this is the first visible showing of arm and hockey from any of kaido's sort of top three guys so i thought that was pretty interesting and we get this really really cool kind of exchange from queen to sanji saying that sanji's burning legs is diablo jambe kind of techniques obviously must be something from judge because they're all you know kind of like weirdly enhanced like the rest of his siblings so then queen confirms king's race essentially by calling sanji what are you stupid what kind of human can burst into flames it's not like you're a lunarian which is you know we get this panel of king kind of glaring at them you know silently kind of possibly mumbling to himself and it's just i get this weird feeling about 
this. I don't know if it's just if it's anyone else, but Sanji's feeling uncomfortable with the raid suit. And obviously something is odd about it. We don't know what's happening to Sanji. Perhaps Sanji is different from the other Vin Smokes in a in a way we didn't expect. I know it sounds stupid, but the fact that these two moments are kind of back to back has me feeling that there might might be some connection to Sanji being a Lunarian which is just it, I feel like that's definitely a stretch but my brain keeps coming back to that idea and Oda definitely knows he can just pull a twist like that that's crazy and like I don't disbelieve it but I don't I don't not want to believe it but I want it to be explained in a cool way you know you know what I mean it's just if that is even real if it is even real it's just, it's very fascinating. Very, very fascinating. But Sanji comes back saying that it's only possible because the flames of his passion are hotter than any heat, which was a line we've got before, and I like a lot. So it was great to see that line brought back. And then Queen brings up how his cybernetics are stronger than anything Vegapunk has ever made. So we get a cool Vegapunk mention in this chapter as well. So... This page is honestly just like crazy. There's just so much going on. And I think it's really cool that King is Lunarian because the Skypeans are descended from there. And I thought it was cool because King always kind of reminded me of like a Skypean. He actually reminded me a lot of how Aruj looks. Specifically, his wings look almost the exact same, but obviously his are black and Aruj's are white. But I think that was really cool that, you know, he has some relation to Skypea. We then change focus to Zoro and King, and King actually uses a pretty cool technique I genuinely did not expect. His sword actually isn't really a sword at all. It's, it kind of looks like a comb or something that's able to like, it's not really, it's just able to somehow trap Zoro's swords within slices of itself. It's kind of like Arlong's sword to put it into some sort of similarities, but really, really thin so it can kind of grab the blades i think it's pretty cool and i very much didn't expect it so i'm very intrigued to see where this fight goes so and we actually continue on with this with zora saying that is true you never really did say you were a swordsman and we get this absolutely fire line from zoro here have it your way just remember when it comes down to it i might be willing to bite through your throat too i can't afford to lose here and then we get more of King mumbling. And I wanted to mention this earlier, but the fact that he's been mumbling kind of over and over again, it reminds me a lot of Karzu from the Revolutionary Army. And he looked very weird as well. So I don't know if I'm like saying that they're the same, but I just think it's very, very strange that both of them kind of mumble. They both look weird, really tall. And Karsu had like gray skin, kind of like an alien does, you know, and you know, King's a Lunarian, you know. I'm just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Just a really small little theory. Putting it out there. But yeah. The Zoro scene is just it's so good. And then we get even more Zoro goodness with this entire next page. It's like Oda just keeps dropping these amazing pages one after the other like sanji just got like lore like well not lore for him specifically possibly if he's not lunary but you know lore for that cool action lore now we're on zoro cool action lore just like oh very very exciting stuff so we cut to a conversation between hyogoro and kawamatsu and it is just it's so awesome it is so so awesome and Kawamatsu is talking about how when Yori gave Zoro the Enma he didn't really protest that much because he senses this weird sort of connection between Zoro and the Shimotsuki clan which is something we've shockingly known since the beginning of the story because Zoro is from Shimotsuki village which has some direct ties to Wano because of the Shimotsuki name and it is just it's so awesome like I can't stress this enough we get this moment where Zoro is compared not just to Shimotsuki clan's leader but also we learn that Ryuma 
is Shimotsuki Ryuma, and it feels as though, well, they think it feels as though it's like fate that he came here because he brought Shushui back to Wano. He just has all these connections using swords. And the best one is that we get this amazing panel that says Ryuma was a one-eyed samurai. Now, the Zoro and Sanji stuff for this chapter was super, super gas. But some other stuff happened as well, which I thought was really, really crazy. So obviously, we're going to get into that as well. But not for as long, I'd say, as the Zoro and Sanji stuff, because that was just... That was so good. We cut away from Zoro and Sanji and actually get to see Mino Arashi, who was not in the last chapter, but I'm really glad we got to catch up on him, getting attacked by Jack's hybrid form, which I think is pretty cool. I like how it's kind of like a centaur creature. That is the elephant bottom, the elephant trunk, and a sort of human upper torso. I think it looks pretty cool. He is sending them outside in order to, you know, try and defeat Ino Arashi, trying to charge him out of Kaido's, you know, actual base. But the hole that was blasted by Big Mom blasting Kid and Killer into Onigashima actually lets the moon shine in, allowing Ino Arashi to go Sulong form. We then cut to Ekamamashi, who is fighting Pedro already outside, and so he also is in his Sulong form. So we get a cool back-to-back -back of the two Dukes of Zo having their Sulong form revealed and hopefully getting some fight shown. Now we're cutting to, I would say by far, the craziest reveal of this entire chapter, which is the final page of the chapter. And oh my god, it looks so freaking cool. So, okay. Momo is now an adult and he is a massive massive dragon and it looks absolutely stellar on a amazing double page spread and we get this very victorious message that they are going to go up to wano and stop kaido and it feels really hype because it actually is a callback to when they first ever met all the way back in punk hazard where luffy rode up momo to get free from the little basement lab they were stuck in and now it's all come in full circle and it feels amazing and something else i really really like is that shinobu is just bawling her eyes out the whole time saying that momonosuke you look just like dot 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 meaning if momo looks just like odin does oh oh my god it's gonna look awesome so yeah very very excited for this i am absolutely enthralled by what's happening right now with luffy and momonosuke this was an absolute banger of a chapter from beginning to end with many crazy reveals many cool new things a lot of action set pieces and just the anticipation the anticipation is very very real for what's going to go down because from what i can tell first off no break next week a amazing we'd love to see it but from what i can tell this next chapter or the one following next chapter is the last chapter of volume 101 which is that big three volume long kind of like spanning you know cover page thing and it's just i'm so intrigued what could happen like how are they going to end the volume because oda tends to end the volumes on you know a pretty hype moment or something shocking to get the reader interested in more obviously I'm just so curious what's gonna what's it gonna be is it gonna be Luffy and Momo landing on the rooftop is it, uh, the potential is so high this is definitely one of those moments where I feel proud to have been able to read this weekly and experience this kind of thing it's just it's awesome so yeah I would love to know what you all think of the chapter what's your most hype moment because there's definitely a lot so what are you most excited about and what do you hope gets more fleshed out in the future or maybe even next chapter who knows that's been me hope you all enjoyed the video and have a good one